I'm Tracy Bingaman. I'm a full-time working mom of five who got sick, burned out, quit my job, and now I teach women how to mom smarter, not harder. The pressures of modern motherhood are intense. If you're a busy working mom juggling all the balls and living in fear of dropping the exact wrong one. Here you'll find the tools you've been searching for to confidently prioritize your life and optimize your ability to rock all the hats that you choose to wear. I'll show you how to break through your limiting beliefs so you'll have more time and more money than you know what to do with. Because even in the busiest seasons of life, you can grow to master your money, own your time, and be the mom with all the margin. This is Fulfilled as a Mom. You know what the world needs? A more confident version of you. The you that you see in the mirror every day, and honestly, maybe the you that you're a little bit hesitant to share with the rest of the world. The world needs you to show up authentically as you are, using your unique strengths and abilities to make the world a better place. If you are looking to step into your power and to feel better about the person that you see staring back at you in the mirror, I'm inviting you to join us on our journey to a more confident you. I'm offering a five-day confidence challenge. It's me sending you love notes of encouragement and action steps that you can take today to be more confident tomorrow. You can check it out following the link in the show notes or go to tracybingaman.com slash challenge. I can't wait to have you join us. Welcome back to another episode of Fulfilled as a Mom. Today, I'm sharing eight ways to have more money. This is a mix of things that can help you to earn more money, keep more of that money in your pocket, and feel more in control of the money you already have. Okay, first, how can you earn more money? Number one, ask for a raise. Yep, Pitch yourself to your employer, ask to meet with your manager, and highlight how you add value to the team. What milestones or specific projects or achievements you're doing, what specific additional roles you've taken on, how you've mentored, led, or done more than your original job description states. Think back on the last couple of years to months and identify what duties you hold now that you didn't when you joined the team. Your role has likely changed. Has your compensation? Start with highlighting those things. Ask for feedback as to how you've been meeting or exceeding expectations. Share that the compensation for your role would be more on par with X, what you'd like to be making, based on the market and your role within the organization. If they share that additional compensation isn't possible, have another ask in your back pocket. Ask for adjusted hours, an admin or work from home day, more PTO or additional benefits that would make your life more flexible, but keep your income the same. Option number two to earn more money is to work more. Yes, I know you already have tons of responsibilities and things to do. And if you're in a season where you're pushing to save for college tuition, a car upgrade, or to beef up your investments, can you pick up another job? PRN or a consulting position, or maybe if you're paid hourly, you could do some overtime. Calculate what you would make and decide if your time is worth it. Remember that only you can answer whether the money that you'll earn with that time is worth the time you would actually spend earning it. Now, on how you can keep more of this money that is coming into your household in your pocket. So one is to sell things. Not only are you getting rid of things around the house that you don't want, need, or use, but you can use that to infuse some cash flow into your budget. Selling everything from furniture to footwear can eliminate clutter and improve that top line of your budget. It's key that when you do sell things, that that cash doesn't disappear into your pocket or your Venmo, but gets put into the income category of your budget. And speaking of budgets, number four, build a budget. A budget, sounds simple, right? It's a plan for your money, monthly, each month, a written down plan for the money that's coming into your house and the money that's leaving. Divide your expenses into fixed and variable expenses, create a debt and savings category, and before each month begins, put your budget on paper or in a spreadsheet or in an app. Start with how much money you're bringing into your household. Your income from all sources goes at the top of the page. 
then your fixed expenses, debt payments, and payoff strategy, savings and variable expenses go down the page, including some spending money and wiggle room, and you should end up with zero. If your budget doesn't balance and there is no zero at the bottom of the page, you have to adjust things to make it balance. Speaking of adjustments, number five, trim down your expenses. So there are these things that sneak into our lives and our budget we forget about and then we keep paying for. So monthly streaming services, do you use them all? What about monthly subscriptions for the gym, a membership, that app you downloaded thinking that you'd use, but you don't? You could use the library instead of the bookstore or Amazon. And most libraries have a great collection of audiobooks and electronic copies of many new books. Number six, get a handle on impulse purchases. You know, those times when you walk into the store to kill time or just pick a couple, up a couple of things and you walk out $200 lighter, or when you're scrolling on social media, you see an ad, you wander into, you wonder how the universe knows what you've been thinking about buying, and then click, click, boom, you bought something from an Instagram ad again. Impulse buying is often the symptom, not the disease. So think back on the times that you've made impulse purchases in the past and try to identify that feeling or feelings that you were having at the time. Were you bored, upset? That phrase, commonly used and probably not serving you, retail therapy, do you actually feel better after you spent that money? Do those purchases bring you lasting joy? Do you make use of those items that you purchased? Are those impulse buys a part of the budget? I do think it's important to note that having a buffer and some spending money or wiggle room in your budget is a smart thing. Don't make your budget so tight that it makes you claustrophobic. What would life look like if you could finally get out of survival mode, consistently find time for yourself, and be the calm, present mom you've always wanted to be? My friend Catherine Wilde, best-selling author of Reclaiming Your Inner Sparkle, life coach, and the founder of Soul Care Mom, is passionate about helping women, just like you, to feel calm and find their unshakable confidence as moms. Imagine reconnecting with the amazing woman you are, being calm and present and creating space for the things that you love. In her membership, Vibrant Mom Life, you'll find monthly themes that will help you shift your mindset, get out of survival mode, and find time for yourself, all while being the mom you want to be. Plus, you'll find guided meditations and yoga practices to help you infuse your days with self-care. Some days are just harder than others, and Catherine provides a library of short and sweet guided affirmations so you can press play and reconnect with your inner calm in minutes. Follow the link in the show notes to join today and stop running on empty and truly start enjoying your mom life. So now what do you do if you make an impulse buy that's not part of the budget? You'll have to course correct. So there are three choices. You can, one, return the item or items. If you're outside that window, you can consider reselling it, depending on what it is. Two, you could adjust your budget categories to reflect the expenses so the budget still balances. Or three, you can pull money from savings to cover your expenses. You are responsible for making sure the budget balances, and that's the way that you have to do it, even when you stray off course to come back to the budget. Number seven, let's talk about food and the budget. We all have to eat, but it behooves you to think about ways to cut back on your food budget expenses if you're looking to have more cash flow and more money in your life. You can do things like packing lunch instead of eating out, running to the cafeteria, or opting for a DoorDash delivery to nourish yourself at lunch. Consider cutting back even temporarily on eating out if you're sprinting towards a big money goal or if you're close. Also, and this may just be me, but during seasons where we are busier, I'm less diligent about meal planning, prepping, and grocery shopping, and it's more of a crapshoot than anything else. This disorganization on my part leads to us throwing out more food than normal because I either buy things that we don't eat and we end up scrambling, eating out, and not using the food that we already have, which is a waste of both food and money. Um, so I did an entire episode on my process for meal planning using Instacart and grocery shopping. So check that out if this is something you're stubbing your toe on. 
If you are consistently throwing food away, think about how you can trim down your shopping trips in that area so you don't end up with overflow. Number eight, and possibly the most important thing to do so that you have more money is to invest. Saving money isn't enough. Saving money, even in a high yield savings account, isn't enough to help you years down the road. Investing is the key to building long-term generational wealth. Investing early, consistently, and wisely are so important. Both inside, if you have a company retirement like a 401k or a 403b or on your own in mutual funds, outside of tax-sheltered retirement, this is the best way to outstrip inflation. So inflation, we all know that things get more expensive over, over time. We know this because in 1910 or 1950, a loaf of bread cost way less than it does today. And don't even get me started on the price of gas. So inflation exists. Things are getting more expensive over time. And if you are saving in just a regular or high yield savings account, you aren't even keeping up with inflation. So what that means is that the rate of inflation is higher than the interest that you're earning on those accounts. In order to outrun inflation and to end up with more money than you started with and to have real buying power in the future, you have to be investing. Inve investing is when you put money in the stock market, mutual funds, et cetera, and that money grows at, on average, a higher rate than inflation. Investing is a long-term game plan for growing your money. Money that you invest in mutual funds should be money that you plan on leaving invested for five to 10 years at a minimum. This should not be your emergency fund, your checking account balance, or honestly, any money that you might suddenly need in six months or a year. It's money that in your budget, it's in the savings and debt category, and you're choosing to invest it for long-term wealth building. So those are eight ways that you can be diligent and intentional about having more money now and in the future. If you are ready to get serious about having more money than you know what to do with, head to tracybingaman.com and download your money saving guide. It's 12 tips to help you save $15,000 this year. And it's a great way to start saving more and spending less. So you can find it at tracybingaman.com slash save, and the link is waiting for you in the show notes. Until next time, keep on taking one step at a time, being diligent with your money and your time to help you become fulfilled as a mom. I'll see you then. I'm doing a victory dance right now because you did it. You took the time to tune in, to reach for a better life, and to take care of you. Did our time together go by way too fast for anyone else? Head to fulfilledasamom.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's show. You now have the tools and knowledge to change your life. Go blaze your trail, take that step, make the shift, and do the work to create fulfillment in your life today.